Why, hello there. This is Mike Moo with HIPAA Watchdog, your virtual HIPAA compliance officer, back with another video prompted by the news uh, from the Wall Street Journal, uh, writing a hist uh, an article about Bill Burr, who actually wrote a 2003 report from NIST Special Publication 800-63, period, Appendix A. And he authored an eight-page primer advising people to do certain things about their passwords. But he has a new tip, and it's never mind what he said. The rules have changed, and the way that he recommended people uh, change and update and, ch and, and um, obscure their passwords is no longer valid today. And the reason why is really quite simple. First, let's go over uh, the password recommendations. The problem with these password recommendations and substitutions that he has recommended advised is that because he recommends it, everybody has been using them, right? So, for instance, this obviously means never mind. Um, now, what I used to think of as lead speak is people would replace the E's with threes, right? And the S's with dollar signs the eyes with the number one or the exclamation point and um, you know throw in a, a couple of punctuations at the end of uh, every password and I see a lot of people doing these and the problem with this is that everybody else is doing the same thing I can't tell you how many times I've seen full-on administrator passwords look like this now let me let me know um, comment down below if you've seen this before, and this is actually a pretty common administrative password that unfortunately is still in use uh, worldwide, and it is a really bad password. Sometimes people think, well, I'll be a little bit more clever. I'll change the character there. I'll change the two S's to password. I guarantee you there's a ton of administrative passwords that are exactly like this. Okay. Um, it's it's pretty ridiculous, and we need to stop doing this. And Bill Burr has fessed up. He's now retired. Um, not to be confused with Bill Burr, the comedian, but uh, Bill Burr from the Nist Publications, uh, that you really got to stop doing this. It's just not, not a good idea. All right. The other recommendation, of course, is um, back in the day is to change your passwords every 60 days. I've been advising that if you have a really strong password that you probably don't need to be changing it. The problem with the changing of the passwords of, of people who, who um, the, the reason why you should be changing your passwords, and that's why when I talk to people who have really bad passwords, is why well, you need to change your password because your password is horrible. It's really easy to hack. It won't take more than a couple seconds for most hacking programs and computer software programs designed to hack these systems to uh, successfully hack it because your passwords are really bad. So you, uh, I recommend using, I personally use a password manager that creates random passwords like this. And as you can see, it's really long and complicated, um, but it's also very difficult to remember and uh, not only difficult to remember but difficult to hack so the recommendation now is to use passphrases which works out pretty well I went and Google search some information about uh, some of these um, recommended passphrases and while I have my own thoughts about passphrases you are definitely free to make any combination of those available so you might ask what is a passphrase passphrase is just a phrase of words that you may or may not be saying or some ridiculous phrase that will help you remember. And uh, it ends up with a long and complicated password that's actually difficult for computers and hacking software to hack because they're strung together in really weird combinations. Okay. So here's an example, of course, uh, the gibberish um, where we think we're clever by changing the O's to zeros and the A's to fours or at signs, etc. So this is difficult for us to remember unless you're a creature of habit, which most of us are because we keep reusing passwords or keep reusing password combinations. And this makes it really easy uh, for computers to hack. So 
Um, it says three days at 1,000 guesses. It makes it very, very easy to hack, all right, but very difficult for us to remember. So when you have a passphrase, it's a phrase, a, a length of words. Um, I remember using passphrases to remember, uh, you know, musical, musical notes. Um, every good boy does fine. EGBDF was something that helped me remember um, notes. Here's an example. This obviously won't necessarily work for you, um, but correct horse battery staple. That's a pretty long, complicated password. It's going to be really difficult uh, to guess. 550 years at 1,000 guesses a second or hashes a second it makes it really difficult. But look at that. If you just think about this ridiculous, this is going to be a lot easier to remember than something like this. So that's the idea of using passphrases. Uh, sometimes I recommend, you know, if you have a favorite poem, please don't pick a poem that everybody else uses because then once I mention this and other people uh, recommend the same thing, then everybody's going to have the same passwords and you definitely don't want to do that. Um, but, you know, uh, me, even even uh, Bible phrases, right, uh, or, or different bi biblical quotes, um, your favorite book, author, saying, uh, even if you convert it from Chinese to English or some other language, those usually help as well, and then you can throw in some punctuations to uh, to uh, make up for the requirements. All right. Now, as far as changing passwords, the obvious is that if you change, if you're required to change your passwords, what what do most people do? They take the password and they make a minor change to it. Maybe um, they change this from zero back to an O, back to a capital O, etc. And that really doesn't really help making it that much more difficult to um, to hack uh, from the computer end, right? Because making one simple change and reverting back and forth is something that we do a lot because we're creatures of a habit, and that's just not a great idea. All right, let's take a quick look at some of the worst passwords of all time. I went and Googled this from Symantec. These are the worst. These are the ones you definitely want to stay away from. You'll see a lot of similarities in here and a lot of words, right? You can't keep, uh, you can't use passwords that are simply words. Um, making, put, putting these together, Shadow Mickey Angel Mother Stars would make a pretty decent passphrase if it weren't already shown here on the web. So maybe you throw it around Shadow Phoenix Gateway Angel Jr. Or um, a junior angel is the mother of Nathan. Um, that could be a pretty long uh, passphrase. But that, that's going to be a lot easier to remember than throwing a bunch of random characters like I use. Um, so these are the types of passwords that I personally use. Sometimes it takes a while to remember, but after you type in a few times, um, you will get it. And uh, one very important rule that you should never change is never reuse your password elsewhere so that if a password gets compromised, that won't then affect all the other accounts that would be associated by you and your username and uh, that password combination. In fact, that's how a lot of people get hacked is that one of these uh, sites got compromised and you didn't know, you didn't get notified, you missed it, got shown up in spam. One great way to find out if you are in a public list is to go to this website, haveibeenpwned.com. Type in your email address or username and figure, figure out if you have been hacked anywhere else. So I'm going to go ahead and type in my E2O Health one. I don't have any pwnage found. Um, I'll type in one of my personal email accounts. And you will see that, um, that my email... And password has been on seven different breached sites, including spam lists on daily motion, um, email addresses, usernames, uh, passwords, DLH, three point, I got my birthday, email addresses, username, password activities. So all this stuff means that you really have to be changing your passwords. Um, if it got breached. Now, if your password's never been breached, it's been pretty long, complicated, or randomized, and you don't use it anywhere else, then I could say that the policy would be, look, you don't have to change it every 60 days, because that's that's pretty ridiculous, having to change every 60 days. If the best that most people come up with is changing one character, which still makes it really easy for a computer to hack by simply changing one character, so that doesn't help anybody. All right, 
So that's that is um, that is the tip in this video. All right, use passphrases. Ignore what people have might have been teaching you about um, about using those passwords where you substitute special characters for letters or numbers because everybody does that. It's programmed into all the hacking software. And uh, try not to be clever with your passwords because um, that's just not the way computers think. That's not the way that they're programmed uh, to hack. Using passphrases is the wave of the future. Try not to pick a super popular passphrase, of course. Um, do something that is completely ridiculous and memorable and probably suitable only to you. And, of course, never, ever share your password. If you do, consider that password to be breached and you should never use it again. All right, thanks for watching, and I will catch you in the next video.